Well, accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein was among the most notorious prisoners in the world. So just how did this wealthy sex offender who had such powerful political connections die in his New York jail cell on Saturday? Well, federal investigations are gearing up and conspiracy theories are flying. Our Paula Sandoval joins us now from outside the correctional facility in New York where Epstein died. Uh, Paula, you are learning about two possible violations inside the jail cell that Saturday night. Yeah, just explain. Linda, you can call them potential failures here in the system in a facility that, as, as you correctly point out, houses many high-profile defendants that are uh, being prosecuted by the U.S. government. Uh, so the main question is exactly how Epstein was able to seize the opportunity to take his own life here, uh, depriving, at this point, the criminal justice system and then, of course, his alleged victims here. Uh, the two potential failures that we're hearing from uh, one source is that he was left alone in his cell. Uh, the concern here is that the policies for... Uh, in this facility require anybody fresh off of suicide watch to never be left in their cell alone to constantly have a cellmate so we're hearing now that he was found uh, dead in his cell by himself so that certainly will will, will, will bring in many questions uh, but then the other uh, issue here that we're hearing about is that he was possibly not constantly monitored in his cell he was housed in what is called a special housing unit in this brown building that you see behind me in lower manhattan all inmates in that particular facility have to be checked on every three minutes. So now, based on what we're hearing from the source, uh, the prison staff here did not do that. So as you can imagine, this will certainly beg a closer look, not just by the Department of Justice and their Office of Inspector General, but also the Federal Bureau of Investigation is now tasked with trying to find out exactly how this happened, Linda. And as these investigations play out, there are so many conspiracy theories being tossed around so much so that hashtag Clinton body count is trending on Twitter and largely in part because the U.S. president retweeted a conspiracy theory linking right. a former president to this death. And that's one of the main reasons why we're talking about this right now uh, on air, because you have the commander in chief essentially promoting one of these uh, extreme and right wing conspiracy theories. It was initially a tweet that was posted over the weekend by a self described Trump supporter, uh, a right wing comedian that essentially claimed that Bill and Hillary Clinton, Trump political opponents, of course, were behind Epstein's death without providing any sort of evidence. So uh, that post was eventually retweeted by President Donald Trump. But while he was doing that, his own attorney general, William Barr, who we hear, hope to hear from momentarily, was saying that this was an apparent suicide. We have another source that was telling CNN that they believed that uh, Epstein took his life by hanging himself. Uh, so what you're hearing from the, the, the nation's top cop is contradicting what the commander in chief is retweeting. So that certainly is concerning for the investigation. So at this point, what we're really focusing on is what William Barr uh, is calling for, which is a thorough investigation, not just uh, by the FBI, but he also uh, made very public that he is hearing that the inspector general with the Department of Justice will be taking a good and hard look at what actually happened here, because that, I think, perhaps broadens the story even beyond uh, the case against the suspected trafficker. This is a facility that houses one of the most or some of the most notable figures that are being prosecuted by the United States government, whether it be a white collar defendant uh, like Paul Manafort uh, uh, of, of the uh, formerly of the Trump campaign or Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, a ruthless cartel kingpin. All right, Paula Sandoval for us in New York, staying across this investigation and all the theories around it. Thanks so much. Well, we have some news just into us. France's gender equality minister has called for an investigation into Jeffrey Epstein's activities. A police source tells CNN that no French victims have come forward yet, but the U.S. investigation has highlighted Epstein's ties with France. We'll bring you more on that as it comes to hand. Well, the man who allegedly opened fire in a Norwegian mosque has appeared in an Oslo court. He had black eyes and scratches on his face and neck. Police have identified him as 21-year-old Philip Mons House. They say he killed his stepsister and posted anti-immigrant statements before heading to the mosque with two guns on Saturday. But the attack was foiled by a 65-year-old worshipper in the mosque. Muhammad acted immediately when the shooter entered the room. He toppled the shooter and pinned him to the floor, sat on top of him. After a while, board member Mushtaq came and helped 
holding him down. Then police arrived and arrested the man. That is all I can say now due to the investigation. Well, let's bring in Salma Abdelaziz, who joins us now from London. And uh, Salma, this is being investigated as a possible act of terrorism. Explain why and what more do you, can you tell us about this suspect? Well, the suspect is a Norwegian citizen, a young man in his 20s, apparently. And when he entered to do that shooting, he was carrying two weapons with him, a shotgun-like weapon and a pistol. He was wearing all black clothing, uh, had knee protection on, had body armor on. So you can imagine it was a very terrifying sight for those inside the mosque. And as you said, he has expressed right-wing sympathies online. He's expressed some anti-immigration sympathies. He's also expressed some support uh, for a, a Norway leader that was leading the country during the Nazi occupation, someone widely seen as a collaborator with the Nazis. So, of course, all of this very right-wing extremism links has the authorities worried and does have them looking at this as a potential act of terror. It really does raise concerns about the spread of right-wing ideology. Is there a fear that other mosques could be targeted here? Well, that's something that the Prime Minister addressed yesterday when she went to visit, uh, you know, this was Eid al-Adha weekend. So all the worshippers of the mosque went to a local hotel to celebrate there because, of course, their mosque was now a crime scene. And the Prime Minister visited them at the time and she acknowledged this is a struggle. This is something difficult and we're trying to tackle hate cra uh, uh, hate speech online rather uh, but she she did admit this is this is a problem this is an issue online and we're doing everything we can to solve it but we haven't figured it out yet linda all right selma abdelaziz saying across this investigation good to have you with us from london thanks so much well, still ahead at the international desk, protesters bring Hong Kong's airport to a standstill. Voters in Guatemala have settled a runoff election. We will have a live report coming up next.